Agora TV. The world is thinking. One, one technique that we do know works for sure is putting aerosols in the stratosphere. Because when we have a volcanic eruption, such as here, you can see the data from Mount Pinatubo, we know that for several years after um, this eruption, that the, earth, that the planet cools. We see this in all the climate records, where one of the tests of climate models is actually to show that you're able to predict the uh, decline in temperature after each of these major eruptions. And uh, so that if we know that we could put enough aerosol to more than offset doubling of CO2 in the atmosphere. We, we're pretty sure we could do that based on this data. Now, this is a one-time eruption, and it goes away. So the difference is you would have to keep injecting the, the stratosphere with, uh, with sulfuric acid, essentially, for the period of time that you wanted to employ this method. So how would you get it up there? These, uh, it's, it's actually completely doable to get it up here. There's ships, there are airships that have been designed for uh, other purposes that can get up there, and a, a fleet of uh, airplanes, something like um, uh, south, the size of Southwest Airlines, could be in place. 200 bombardier uh, jets have been calculated, for example. 200 bombardier jets flying 24-7 could cool the atmosphere and offset a doubling of CO2. So it's absolutely doable. And it's not that expensive. It's only on the order of a billion or two dollars a year by, by recent studies have shown you could get it down to a billion dollars a year to do this. And the reason is it's so inexpensive is just that a few grams of sulfur in the stratosphere will offset tons and tons of CO2. That's why it's so effective. So here's the, the concept is that you save the polar bears by putting um, CO2 in the stratosphere. Well, there's a lot of issues with this. After Pinatubo, there was this distinct drying that took place. So one of the things we're doing with this is we're not returning to the natural state. We're not, if there was a natural, first of all, there is no natural state. You need to get that through your head. But second is we're not returning to the way it was before the Industrial Age by doing this. We're actually layering on two unnatural uh, situations. One is the CO2 that we emitted, and the second is that we're reflecting radiation. So it's a combination. We really don't know what's going to happen. In the end, this is a highly uncertain technology because there's no analog for it except these eruptions. And we see from the eruptions, at least when you had a single spike eruption, that there might be some very bad effects in terms of uh, droughts. That's one. Another is that how, have, how many of you guys have been up in the hills in Oakland and looked out towards the bay and what color is the sky on a smoggy day? Whiskey. whiskey. It's kind of whitish and whiskey, right? So if you look straight up, what color is the sky? Blue. blue. So why is that? It's the aerosol. So we would not have a blue sky if we did this. The sky would be distinctly white light would come in to the earth in a scattered way rather than a direct way, which has an impact on all plant growth. There are so many things about this that we don't understand. And yet, it's the only thing, this is the only technology of all of them that could, could help us in an emergency. So we have two kinds of technologies. One, the ones that take carbon dioxide out of the air and that put it underground. These are going to be relatively expensive and relatively slow acting, but they remove the cause of the problem. So eventually, we almost certainly will have to do those. And we need to get the research done so that we can do them as inexpensively and safely as possible. The second kind of technology, the only one of which so far looks like it would meet the criteria of being high leverage, in other words, inexpensive, fast, and effective, is aerosols in the stratosphere of some sort. But that technology has huge downsides in terms of inability to predict how it's going to behave, in terms of unequal uh, effects. Some, you know, for example, uh, China could decide to do this. Why would China decide to do this? They do it all the time because they do weather modification all the time. It's a political thing with them. It doesn't work 
but they need to demonstrate to their population that they're doing something. So China could turn around and unilaterally decide to do this because things have gotten to be unbearable in China. And if they do, these studies at least indicate that it's quite possible that the monsoons in India stop. So what have you got? You've got not only a tremendous climate tragedy, but you've got an inter a political tragedy. The unknowns associated with this technology are enormous. <laughs>